Um, you know, we've gone from not caring that we had, you know, oh, I, I can buy gold. I don't care where it came from. I've got gold. I've got wealth. But now people are starting to ask the uh, questions as, but was that gold eth ethically sourced? Over the past year, especially, but this has been a, a secular trend, which we've seen for some time, is the rise of ESG, you know, uh, environmental, societal and governance standards being applied to investing across the board. And uh, more recently, we've seen this, you know, over the past 12 months, especially, everyone got this big green kick. Uh, for whatever reason, during lockdowns, everyone got a lot more sort of conscious of this thing. Uh, and you saw it being promoted by a lot of the, the high hegens in the investment space saying, you know, everything's got to be ESG. We're going to give every major company an ESG ranking. Uh, now, mining, obviously, well, it's not necessarily obviously, but mining, uh, commodity extraction in general, get, you know, does not have a uh, does not have a great reputation when it comes to protecting the environment, uh, nor, nor indeed for societal and government governance standards. Right. So it's pretty pretty bad, but uh, you have seen a lot of uh, gold companies trying to get ahead of this. I remember uh, one thing in particular uh, stands out to me is one of the uh, one of the miners, I forget it uh, off the top of my head, who, which created a, you know, a Save the Rhino uh, bullion bar, where I think 10% of, uh, you know, it was 10%, uh, you know, above what the premium would normally be, and that would go to Saving the Rhinos, that kind of thing. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to green gold, when it comes to, you know, green gold extraction, you know, uh, you're, you're very much into this space now. Can you tell me what's going on there? Because it feels like it's something we're going to see a lot more of through the 2020s. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and even look, being in the precious metal space for the past 13 years, ESG wasn't really a, a common topic among miners. It's something that I really noticed that picked up, like I noticed that the conversation changed in 2019. Uh, but when I was uh, holding a forum at IMARC uh, last year, obviously virtually, uh, IMARC is an international mining conference that, you know, travels around the world in different places. The hot topic with everybody you spoke with was ESG, ESG. Uh, and it's basically, I think, that, that there's a sense of privilege that comes with being able to buy, a, you know, an ounce of gold. You know, generally, if you can afford to buy an ounce of gold, you're probably not hard up for a dollar. Uh, and this is something that has finally started to resonate with retail investors. Um, you know, we've gone from not caring that we had, you know, oh, I, I can buy gold. I don't care where it came from. I've got gold. I've got wealth. But now people are starting to ask the, uh, questions as, but was that gold eth ethically sourced? Um, I've had these conversations with a, a couple of bullion dealers and incidentally at um, the refiner I now work for about how can I trace my gold? Because to me, it's really important to know and, and to a lot of other people that no, you know, no child labor was used during refining gold. You know, we were talking about it before we call it artisanal gold, but sometimes that can just be a, a fancy word for small time communities that probably aren't mining uh, gold to standards that are accepted by other mining companies around the world. You know, we want to make sure that people have still got clean drinking water when mining's happening. We want to make sure that people are paid a living wage. So the, this ESG focus has, it, to me personally, it really feels like it's come out of nowhere. But the short version is people are caring about the impact that miners have on the environment. And they're also holding government's account to make sure that they hold miners' account to do it. It's no longer just enough to put um, to start digging holes. Uh, governments and uh, the people who approve it want to make sure that there's a sufficient rehabilitation plan when that uh, mine closes up, because no hole lasts forever. I mean, there's a there's a couple of century old holes that make it feel like a mine lasts forever, but rehabilitation is a huge part of making sure that when a mine is closed, that that mine um, is you know restored for the next generation. Um, also to the processing of these metals. Uh, you know, technology has made leaps and bounds in the last 20 or 30 years, but for a long time that wasn't being uh, applied to the refining process. Uh, I'm quite fortunate with the company that I work, uh, work for now. They've been leaders in innovation of this. Uh, they use something called uh, acidless separation, which basically means that they shove uh, lumps of Doré bars into what is essentially a pressure chamber and through heat and steam, they extract the metals out of the ore body, uh, basically getting it to into the high 90s. Uh, and the way they do that, it means that there's been almost no chemicals that have gone through the process and there's no noxious fumes going out into the environment. Um, I used to think that was unusual. Since moving over to Palion, I've discovered that actually, no, that's commonplace. People are expecting, or miners in particular, are expecting to work with partners that have this strong ESG focus it's not because the miners want to do it so much. It's because 
that people actually de are demanding these goods to, you know, to be held up to high ESG standards.